Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Make sure to like and subscribe to the channel for more interesting stories like these. Now, let's get into today's story video. 19 years gone in one conversation. After 19 years of marriage, my wife, 46 male, 48 female, notified me about a blind date that had been set up by a friend. She went out with her best friend T for a girl's night out on the town. T is said to have set her up with a guy she had already slept with a few weeks before. T was up with someone else at the time, and he had set up my wife for the experience before that. My wife left the house about 7 p.m. and returned at 3 a.m. the next morning. The revelation came completely unexpectedly, and she expressed regret, expressed a want to work on our marriage, expressed concern about the waterworks, and asked forgiveness. Because T had slept with him, she said that there had been no interaction between her and the gentleman. She was well aware that agreeing to meet with him was a horrible idea, and that traveling to meet with him was much worse than that. When she claims that nothing happened, I believe she is not giving the whole truth. Also, she said that the guy worked at a sawmill, which allows you to make more money, which is why I am the better choice. Essentially, she was confessing that she had made a determined effort to take my position. If she had been able to locate someone with a greater salary, the tone of this piece would have been drastically different. A few time after this, ladies' night out, and before the revelation my wife and T had a devastating breakdown of their relationship. T is a liar and a manipulative, jealous person, according to my wife, who claims that they went from being the closest of friends. According to my understanding, the confession, or partial confession, was made in order to keep T from notifying me about her involvement with the guy. By just providing me only a fraction of the story, you are attempting to deceive me about the truth of what happened. Only enough to make things look horrific, but not enough to convey the full horror of what transpired. To be really honest, I didn't need to know everything that had happened. Her story didn't make any sense to me. There were just too many holes in the story's structure. Several little coincidences occurred during this time period, which brought everything into clear perspective. When she told me of this, I completely lost all affection for her. I went numb and didn't even show any signs of being sad. I've reached the end of my rope. My focus at the moment is on finalizing my exit strategy. Establishing financial stability, securing an apartment, and so on are all important steps to take. We are devastated that she is willing to throw away 19 years of marriage with no regard for anything, even our two young children. Please accept my apologies in advance for the length of this update if you are not bothered by it. A great lot has transpired in the period since my first article. At this moment, she is in full panic mode and has no idea what to do. Her white blood cells are assaulting her lungs, and she has just lately been diagnosed with an autoimmune condition as a result of this onslaught. In addition, these variables lead to the incidence of asthma episodes that are resistant to traditional treatments. When she has exhausted her Medicaid coverage, she will be required to pay $13,000 for the only medication available to treat her illness. She would not be able to afford it if it weren't for my excellent health insurance, which is supplied by my company. She is putting in every effort to rebuild the connection with her ex-partner. It is also possible to arrange for couples' counseling to take place. After two and a half hours of instruction, we were done. She explains why she only gave a portion of the truth and why she wants to correct the problem. The counseling session, which is how I had thought it would. It seems like every session was dedicated to pointing out all of the errors I'd committed ever, to assist her in making ends meet while on partial disability and unable to work. I am working 50 hours a week to assist her in meeting her financial obligations. In spite of this, I'm not claiming to be flawless by any stretch of the imagination either. There were many things that needed to be raised to a higher level, including our two children. Everything was okay except for the fact that I had been told that mentioning her date night was absolutely banned. If you have such an excellent radar for identifying what everyone else is doing wrong, turn that radar on yourself and tell me what you are doing wrong," the therapist said near the middle of the third session, referring to his or her own shortcomings. This time, the metaphorical came crashing down on us. We were there to repair me, and while we were there, my STBXW began shouting at the counselor, demanding to know why she was stating her when we were there to heal me. A few minutes of back and forth later, my STBXW ran out tears in her eyes. She had been crying all through. In the opinion of the counselor, my STBXW has great anger against me, and I do not believe that this marriage can be saved. My primary reaction was, yup, and no, respectively. In my thank you note to the counselor, 
I also advised her that we would not be returning to the office. She offered to meet with me one-on-one -on -one in a quiet place to discuss my concerns. Before proceeding to warn her of the taboo situation, however, I reassured her that it was quite likely that I would do so in the near future. That is not to suggest that this came as a surprise to her, and in fact, it just served to reinforce her presumptions even more. To say that the whole drive back to the home was spent discussing what a con artist the therapist was would be an understatement. When I'm at home, I'm very much operating on autopilot. Because it is no longer a residence, I refer to it as the house. Taking up the additional bedroom is something I've done recently. For the sake of this discussion, I am married, but I do not have a wife. If she didn't need proper medical coverage, she would continue her search. I don't mean to track down T in order to complete the story. I live in a little town with a population of around 900 people. Every day, I drive to a bigger city to attend to my job. When I was visiting the community's loan grocery shop on Monday of this week, guess who happened to run into my STBXW? Who should appear but the guy from our blind date? Is it true that little towns exist? It was an inescapable situation. My position was at the far end of the aisle when he approached her. He's a little figure. Perhaps 5'9", in height, with a weight of 150 pounds, she was standing with her back to me, completely oblivious to where I was. He asked her out for the second time right in front of me. She, on the other hand, refused. That's when I walked through the door. Upon more investigation, I discovered that it was the guy she had gone on a date with around two months before. He wanted to know what it meant to me. So I told him. I shoved him against the shelves and told him that I'd been her husband for 19 years at that point. The thought of his peeing on himself made me a little nervous. I'm 6'2 tall and 250 pounds, and a rather muscular individual. She made an unsuccessful effort to convince me to back down. I shouted at her, telling her to stop chatting and concentrate on what I was saying. She fell into tears as soon as she heard the news. He informed me that he had been informed she was single and pleaded with me not to kill him, which I refused. My first question was whether or not they had FKED. She wept even more as he swallowed hard and said yes, and he sobbed even harder. I promised him I'd never see him again. I kept my promise. He expressed his regret loudly and stormed out of the establishment. Her AP exposed her because she was in the wrong place at the wrong time, according to her. If it hadn't been for him, I would have ultimately entered T in order to receive the narrative. Needless to say, I'm mostly operating on autopilot right now. The sensation is that every emotion has been extinguished. When I'm with my children, I have to have a positive attitude. If it is an emotional self-defense tactic to keep things from falling apart even more, I'm not sure what it is. I'm well aware that I should be displeased with this situation. One day, it's going to come down hard on you. What I know to be true is no longer real in my eyes. Is it true that my children love me? Or do they seem to like the presents I provide them? Are my parents on the same page? They appreciate the fact that I had excellent grades in school, don't they? Have you ever found yourself in a sticky situation? Have you always had jobs that were well-paying? The only thing I am certain of is that I will not be able to continue in this farce that is my marriage. I get up, go to work, and don't eat or sleep for a long period of time. Only complete strangers on the internet have been informed of my situation. I don't have somebody with whom to discuss this. I go from day to day, attempting to maintain a sense of normalcy. It's possible that my STBXW was right. It is necessary for the therapist to assist me.